Hey, how's it going, everybody? Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about some European football, about football in Europe and the leagues, the transfers, um, the point system, relegation, promotion, everything. So give me about 10 minutes and you'll be able to understand all of this stuff. So it was a great World Cup. Um, America didn't make it as far as I would have liked, but they definitely did. They gave us some exciting games. I had a great time and I just really enjoyed being out with all my friends here in America and watching the games in, in the pubs, in uh, just, you know, people's houses everywhere. We all got into it. So a lot of people actually had a lot of questions about, um, you know, who the stars were that were in the World Cup from all over the country, where they played, what leagues they played in, you know, and then once I basically explained that all the best players, most of these guys that play on these national teams, on all the big, big national teams, and then even Uruguay, Paraguay, you know, even uh, South Korea, Japan, a few of them, they, like the best from all of these teams play in Europe. And so the European leagues is, are the most exciting to watch. So this is a little instruction or you know, a little tutorial for all of you, who have, all of you people who have questions about um, how, how football works in Europe. It's actually kind of complicated, so sit back and relax for, you know, and here we go. So um, first off, you got to understand in Europe there's a, several different leagues. The leagues are done by, it's like imagine if there was an NBA in Mexico, an NBA in Canada, and an NBA in America. And so all of these, each of these leagues are just as popular as the other ones. They have a lot of money, they have a lot of players, all this other stuff. That's the way it is in Europe. Europe, each country has its own league, but the big four, the big four that everyone knows about, people follow, are the English Premier League in England, uh, La Liga in Spain, Serie A in Italy, and Bayern, er, the Bundesliga in Germany. All the, um, these four leagues are the most popular, and especially the English Premier League and La Liga right now are, the, are definitely the most popular because they, create, they have the, the strongest teams and they do the best in all the club competitions, the competitions between teams. But uh, we'll get that, get to that. So, like I said, imagine if there was an NBA in each of these, uh, in all of these different countries, or in each of the, in each of these countries um, in North America. That's what it's like in Europe. But there's several different of them. So people, there's a lot of um, transfers, a lot of you know goings on outside of the country, and then back in, and then between the teams in their own countries. Uh, FIFA controls is the governing body for the World Cup for all of these teams, the Federation of International Football Associations. Um, Okay, in each league, the, in, um, in, in the English Premier League, the big four teams, the ones that are traditionally dominant and win championships the most, are uh, Arsenal, my team right here, Arsenal, uh, Manchester United, Chelsea, and Liverpool. In Spain, it's um, Real Madrid and Barcelona. Just those two basically every year go at it for, the, for uh, who wins the, who's going to win the championship. In um, in Italy, the number one, or the, basically the big team right now is Inter Milan. Uh, a lot of teams were fined and haven't been doing well in the past few years uh, because of a scandal called Calcio Poli. Look it up. Uh, it was a ref bribery scandal. Inter Milan has won the Serie A, won the league for the past five years in a row. So it's, it's kind of been one-sided. And then in the Bundesliga, Bayern Munich is traditionally dominant. Even though they haven't done the best in the past little bit of time, past three, four years, tr they've definitely won more... Um, Bundesliga titles than any other team. Um, so basically, and then also what's complicated about um, about football in Europe is there is no um, there's no playoffs, there's no championship, there's no the bet you have the best record, you make it to the playoffs, and the two best teams play each other. In football, in, in like basically, this is, there's no playoff like that outside of Canada, USA, and Australia. Basically, most sports in the world play on a point system. That point system goes by, you get three points for a win, one point for a draw, and no points for a loss. So all that, all you do, so you basically you try to build up points throughout the season, and once you get to a certain number of points where you have the most and no one else can catch you, and there's only a certain number of games left, then you are crowned champion. So you could win the, the league, be the, be the champion of the English Premier League or of La Liga, while you still have several games left. Or it could go right down to the wire if there's another team that is doing well just like you and you guys are very close in points. It can all go. So that's the way it works. There is no, pre there is no playoff. But, the, but it's such a long season. Soccer, like the English Premier League, all these, it's basically nine, um, um, nine months long. Uh, 
from about basically like end of July, early August until beginning to mid May. And this is a, you know, like that's a very long season. And so during that time, they teams usually play 38 games. There's 20 teams in each league usually. That's how it is in the Premier League. And um, of those 20 teams, they each play, or each of those 20 teams play each other team twice, once home and once away. So that's 38 games. And then also, because of the point systems, you can rank how exactly how good a team is each year. So number one, they have the most points. Number two, all the way down to the bottom, number 20. Well, since, like I said, imagine if there was an NBA in Mexico, Canada, and the USA. There'd be a lot of competition. Everybody would be courting LeBron, but then also there'd be tons of teams just co trying to come up and get in. It's not like there's 15 or 25 rich teams. People can... You can you can buy to buy talent and you can make a team and that's how you do and you get promoted and relegated in European football. So that means each year in the Premier League, for example, the bottom three teams that they got the least amount of points in the league they get bumped down to the second division, which is called the Championship, and then the top three teams from this Championship they get moved up to the Premier League. So unless your team is really good and they traditionally always, they never have to worry about relegation, a team could be in the Premier League one year and then three or four seasons, oh yes, there's also League two, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way down. They could move down if they continue to not do well, but that also means other teams can go up. So it's very exciting. You never know how a team, where a team will be the next season. It's very interesting. For example, Newcastle just got relegated this last season and they've been in the Premier League for something it was the longest of any team it was over a hundred years and now they're out it's pretty crazy but um so then um also transfers like i said um because the uh there's there's so many leagues throughout the uh throughout the uh throughout europe they there has to be a certain time when they can transfer for international transfers between countries between leagues there are um you can have transfers from july 1st to the end of august and then one month during the season which is January 1st to the end of January. And then um, finally, the big thing is a lot of people seem to think that there's people that like the players um, on the national teams play for like two or three different clubs, two or three different teams, and because they play in so many different competitions. And that is true. They do play in a lot of competitions, but they, tr they only play for one team, their club team. They may also play for the national team, but that is the country that they were born in, and that's the country they play for. So, for example, Cesc Fabregas, who plays for Arsenal, uh, he, uh, he, he was born in Spain, in Catalonia, but he plays for, uh, for Arsenal, the team, which is in England, but he also plays for the, the, Spanish, um, the Spanish national team. That's because he's allowed to play for his country, but then also he can choose whatever league he wants, so he plays in England, while Wayne Rooney is from England and plays in England. So, but, um, for example, Arsenal plays, um, in, uh, in, uh, the league where you go for points and each team uh, tries to win the league that season. But then there's also something called the FA Cup, which each country has a cup as well for all the club teams, all of the teams within that country. And you can even you can even potentially start at a you know real low team and work your way up, and you can even play all those top teams and try to win your club's country or your your club's cup competition. Um, anybody can join. So mostly the Premier League teams win it, but that's the way it goes. And then finally, um, there's the Champions League. And the Champions League is a big deal. It's where all the top teams from Europe get together. And they, um, and like, for example, the English Premier League has four, four teams. And then Spain has the top four teams, Italy. And then even the Netherlands, Portugal, they all have, they may not get four teams, but they get a certain number of teams. And they put their top teams in. And it's a club competition for all of the best teams in Europe. It's a lot of fun. It's basically the largest club competition there is in the world. And it, it's just a great time. Inter Milan just won it this last year. Barcelona won it before that. Hopefully um, Arsenal wins it this year. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, so that's my quick rundown on understanding European football. I hope that was pretty simple, and I hope you guys can get it. Um, any Americans that want to now feel like you know what you know uh, a little bit about uh, European football, want to come out to the pub, I'll see you out there. It was a uh, can't wait. Go Arsenal. Looking forward to a great season. Have a good one, all.